Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and today we're going to unbox and create with Upcrate May 2022. Of course it goes without saying if you haven't received your Upcrate yet, now's a good time to stop and come back later. But in the meantime, let's crack this one open shall we? As always with Upcrate and many of the subscription boxes, we get a gorgeous print and this one is by Tantani. And I can't help but notice there is a bit of a mermaid theme. I also love the stickers as well. I'm enjoying these sticker sheets just lately. Upon diving in the box, I notice we have two Van Gogh watercolours as well as a gorgeous set of handmade scrim watercolours. We have a bottle of Winsor & Newton ink, a Derwent water brush, a regular paintbrush and two sheets of watercolour paper. I was quite happy to see a watercolour box as I feel like it's been a little while with Upcrate and I'm super chuffed that they went with a small independent company and the independent company made these gorgeous dots. Anyway, let's talk quickly about the Van Gogh paint. We have permanent red violet and azo yellow. I never know how I'm saying that or if I'm saying that correctly or not. We have a bottle of Winsor & Newton ink and that is in burnt sienna. And the dots by Scrim are Cosmic Wave, Raw Gold, Moon Dust, Osiris Red and Atlantis and those are the shimmery ones which you can see. And the other ones are Pacific Blue and Deep Orange. Funnily enough though, I had not checked the magazine when I swatched them out. I was just too excited and I thought the, uh, the, well, the, the blue wasn't the blue, was it? Well, actually it was. I labelled it as purple, but hey, you don't know until you swatch these things. The water brush is a Derwent water brush and it's got a feature where you can suck water up by pulling the handle back. I'm still just not a fan of water brushes, they're just not my thing, but I do use it as a regular brush for the purpose of this video. The other brush we have is a Lavis 4 brush 100 or 00, I think and it is a round brush with a diameter of 5.5 millimeters it's got like copper wire holding it in place it's very nice and it holds a heck of a lot of water and finally the watercolor paper we have is the saint cuthbert's mill saunders waterford watercolor paper Whew. I must admit though, it was very nice paper. I kind of wish there'd been a few more sheets in there. However, I do understand, you know, at least we're getting some supplies to work with. And I can imagine them holding a contract with a small independent company as well, such as Scrim. That's gonna cost a little bit, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay. It's not as if I haven't got watercolor paper. I also forgot to mention, we get a little tin to keep our paints in. I'm sure you saw a few moments ago where I peeled the dots off. It was a tricky process, but for me personally, that stops any cross-contamination of colours and hopefully it'll extend the life of them. This month's Upcrate challenge is called Let It Out. And I've done two pictures here because I just didn't really like how this looked once I'd finished it but my idea for this picture was a character opening a bottle of stars and they're all just jumping out. I used the Van Gogh paints to add that background down and I started off just using the traditional flat colours to begin with. I found that dot of blue that we had worked beautifully with the red violet which was the Van Gogh paint and also the orange dot we had acted as a nice bridge so we could transition from the blue colour straight to the yellow without having any spooky green in there and don't get me wrong I have nothing against adding a bit of a spooky green transition however I sometimes think especially when I want something to have a golden luminance it kind of desaturates it so just being able to bridge those colours with something in between which kind of stops the green, I didn't mean that to rhyme. But I do tend to find that looks better and again, adds a bit of luminance there. Now I've obviously used Van Gogh watercolours quite a lot and they featured in videos and I do own quite a few anyway, mainly from boxies. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the scrim paints and yes I have used handmade paints before as well and they do tend to have a bit more of a unique quality than something that's factory produced. 
I did find that the regular watercolours blended and mixed beautifully. I found as well that the, 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 there wasn't anything about it where I thought, oh, it's not going to stick to the page properly or anything. Whatever they'd used as a binder was great. But those metallics, oh my gosh, they are chef's kiss good. And that's partially why I wasn't massively pleased with this picture. I don't feel like I'd highlighted them properly and nothing really stood out. And even by adding a liner pen, which was not included in the box, I, I just wasn't happy with the final outcome. So I thought, right, it is time to try something else. So back to using my trusty dip pen with the Windsor & Newton ink. I thought I would draw a goddess type character and they are letting their power out and that was the thought behind it. Plus it was a great excuse to do some swirly hair and you know I do enjoy drawing and painting swirly hair and this just seemed the perfect place to do so. Now I do like Windsor & Newton inks, I've got a little tin full of them and luckily I haven't already got burnt sienna so that was quite nice to add to my collection. However. Even though it does say it's water resistant, that's all it is as a resist. I did actually have a bit of trouble painting over the top, especially with the lighter colours. It was more noticeable there, where it would bring that ink back to life. Now, I wouldn't say it was a massive catastrophe or anything like that. However, it did blur the lines that I put down and I, I don't know, it just altered the general aesthetic that I wanted. Maybe if I'd have done the outlining afterwards, it might have been a different story, but I did kind of half expect them to just have a little bit more resilience. Like I say, it's not a massive, not a massive deal really, but it just would have been, I don't know, maybe I was a little impatient and didn't let it dry for long enough. Anyway, let's get back to this picture though. This is one I'm much happier with. So I added a bit of a yellow wash on her because I, again, luminosity is key here. She is emanating whatever power it is this particular goddess has. I sort of wanted the light shining on her face as well as emanating from her eyes. So I, uh, I do leave them blank. So it does look a little bit freaky, but that's okay. But everything on there just has this golden glow about it. I used the... Osiris Red to add to her lips, as well as adding some highlights of gold in there. I went back and filled the eyebrows in because at this point I'd kind of figured out what was going on with the ink there, and then just added a few more details on the face. I also went and added more lines and more details and depth into the character's hair, and at this point I, I was like, okay, I, I guess I'd done this in the wrong order. So if you're wondering why your ink's running, it's just because it's resistant, it's not waterproof. And if you can, leave your line work till the very end. I was really happy as well when I had this box because it motivated me to look for my favorite dip pen. And I did actually find it. I turned the whole room upside down. It is now a mess again, but I did at least find what I was looking for. Once I had done the hair, it was just time just to add a few more details in and that orange came in really handy for that. And again, it's just where the shadows would lie and just add in a few more details, especially where I didn't mind it blending too much with the ink. I used the gold again on her lips just to add some highlight as well as adding some metallic touches to our character's necklace and then I went in there with I believe the cosmic blue on her necklace gemstone and the Atlantis colour for the straps of her clothes. I thought no starry background is complete without a few stars in there so I used those bluey toned metallics the blue and the purple ones to add some stars and then I added some flecks of gold surrounding it as well as in her hair and I am super pleased with how this one came out compared to the first. The first was a disaster, just ignore that on the screen. There we go. So I was super happy with this box. I loved these handmade paints and I might have purchased a couple off their website. So I can't wait to do a video showcasing those. I do wish we'd had more paper, but again, I've covered why I understand we haven't. Sometimes something's got to give. But back to it, I super enjoyed this box. It was great. And again, you've got to support these little companies. There should be a playlist featuring loads of subscription boxes I've done in the past if you want to click on them and have a little binge. 
in the meantime thank you so much for watching you guys are a massive motivator for me doing art so thank you and of course i'll see you lovely lot soon bye